So you're world building and you want to invent your own unit of measurement. Well, good for you. That's ambitious. But do you really want to reinvent the wheel? Sure you do. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Other Epic Story Vlog. This is the show where I talk about writing, editing, and world building tips and tricks and then I apply it to my own work which is an epic dystopian fantasy. If you want to learn more about this project, I have a link to it right up there. But without further ado, let's get to our topic today which is how do you invent your own unit of measurement? Before we dive into creating our own units of measurement, we must first learn about the ones that already exist. That way, we can understand how unit of measurements are actually invented. It's good to know the thought process of those that came before us. So in history, the human body was very commonly used as a unit of measurement. As the feet, for example, is the average size of a person's feet, which is 12 inches. An inch is supposed to be the average length of a man's thumb. But due to the fact that everybody's body is different, this made it hard for commerce and science to function properly because just imagine you want to buy a foot long sandwich and the guy hands you like this small sandwich and you're like, that's not a foot long. I know a foot long. And then the sandwich artist responds, well, that's the size of my foot, beat it. And you know what they say about sandwich artists with little feet. So eventually they had to standardize it and like this, we have to agree on this. Another unit of measurement so blunt, like this obviously came from old time, is stones, which is about like 6.3 kilograms. You can just search stones measurement and find old pictures of these rocks with a hook at the end. And it was obviously used to weigh different things like I assume grain and wheat and other sort of trading goods. So that's one way to like sort of standardize. We all have to agree that this is the thing that we're gonna use as the weight. And anybody who tries to cheat that is a criminal. Another one I always found interesting, this one has a complicated math equation to it that I'm not gonna go into, but it's horsepower. Here's the complicated math equation. This is what it looks like. I'm not gonna talk about that. Common misconception is that one horsepower equals the power of one horse. But that's not true. The peak performance of one horse equals 14.9 horsepower. An average human is about five horsepower. So <laughs> we are actually more powerful than one horse. That's not true. I don't know what point I was trying to make with that. I just wanted to share that knowledge with you that sometimes we name stuff after things and it doesn't actually mean what people think it means. Another really interesting measurement is the measurement of time. How do we measure a day? If you look back into the history books, they were sundials, they were hourglass, they were even incense and candles if you need a timer. Like this candle is an hour candle. If I light it now, in an hour it'll all burn out. And so I know exactly how long an hour is. Whew. So those are a few examples of units of measurement that we could use as inspiration when we start creating our own. Um, I'm gonna start with a few examples that I have from my story and I'm gonna talk about how I came to sort of create them, all right? So I'm gonna be reading out a few sentences and then I'll be talking about the unit of measurement in them and then I'll talk about my thought process and how I uh, came to that. Full disclosure, these examples are all from my first draft. These are kind of half-baked units of measurement, but I'm gonna to try to wring some, you know, genuine creativity out of them. So we'll see how it goes. The first example goes like this. Murder was not a small crime in any place, and especially in his hometown of North Bourbon, approximately 600 wheels from where he was now. So the unit of measurement here is with wheels. So we're all familiar with taking a taxi ride, seeing the fare, the number flicking through. 
Well, back in my world, if you're a commuter and you want to pay for a ride, it's all measured in wheels, how many times the wheel turns. So they have a mechanism that clicks every time the wheel does a full rotation, and every 100 rotation equals one wheel. That seems like something that legitimately existed, right? <laughs> you don't have to answer me. All right, second example. Then a menstruating cow trampled his brother Kylie, dragging him 20 strings before abandoning his corpse in a ditch. So in my world, which is just a wonderful way to start every sentence. So in my world, uh, strings, rope, twine, is they're all very precious commodities. And it's, it's sort of, there's one person in every town that's in charge of this resource. And every family is only allowed to get a certain amount of rope, twine, strings per month. And the way it is measured is by the size of a family. So this family will all gather together and the rope seller or whatever will wrap around the family a few times to determine the length in which to sell. So a string is the wrapping around of a family three times. Of course, this all varies from family to family, but I think it all makes sense when you think of resource and how you have to ration what you have. And a bigger family will in fact need more rope than a smaller one. So I like measurements sometimes that uh, varies depending on what it is that you're buying, like buying an arm's length of 50-50 tickets at the hockey game. You know, you want to have someone with like long arms to buy it because they will get more tickets. And I just sort of love that sort of weird, uh, stupid laws that happen and it definitely happens in the real world as well. Third example, this one's about time. For 20 dark moons, he lived the wearisome life as a fugitive traveling through the mountains along the boundaries of Jin, the vast desert that it bordered and beyond. For 20 dark moons. Yeah, that sounds ominous. The funny thing about the moon is the moon is not always visible during the day and is not always visible during the night. This is where it gets interesting because the moon goes through different phases. So when the moon is not visible during the day and only visible at night, that is called a dark moon, at least in my world. I made that up. That is just the way uh, my character uses to measure the length of time. So when you see, like during when you're traveling during the day and you see the moon and you're like, all right, the moon's there during the day. That's all right. It's like a full moon or a waning or waxing moon. It's just a way of measuring time. Uh, something about that just gets me thinking about the complexity of the universe which is the whole point of world building isn't it is to understand these little fine details of existence i like that stuff and i hope you like that stuff too thank you for sharing your time with me today i hope you enjoy this video if you want to learn about the three rules of world building i got a video for you right over here uh, please check it out. Um, if you haven't yet, please click subscribe. It will mean a lot to me. See you in the next video. See you in the other world. I'm working on an outro. That, uh, that's, that's not going to be it. Take care, everybody.